Hi, I'm Jacqueline Stewart, host of Silent Sunday Nights here on TCM, coming to you from the Academy Museum of Motion Pictures in Los Angeles. This week, I'm excited to be here on a Saturday night to present a double feature of my personal picks as part of our ongoing series, Fireside Favorites with the Hosts. Up first tonight, we're taking a look at a powerful and complicated tearjerker from 1934. Starring Louise Beavers and Claudette Colbert, it's an adaptation of Fanny Hurst's best-selling novel, Imitation of Life. The film traces the lives of two widows, one white, one black, who meet by chance and decide to throw in their lots together. They manage to find success in business, but their happiness is threatened as their daughters grow into young women. For Colbert, her daughter becomes an unwitting romantic rival. For Beavers, her fair-skinned daughter becomes desperate to pass for white and feels ashamed of her black mother. What's my baby want? So much of the power of this movie comes from the performance by Louise Beavers, and critics singled her out for praise and even noted that she should have earned an Oscar nomination, as Juanita Moore did when she played the same role 25 years later. I don't know rightly where the blame lies. It can't be our laws. For Beavers, Imitation of Life gave her the most significant role of her film career. She spent most of her long career in Hollywood playing the stereotype of the good-natured maid, mammy, and cook, always on hand to lend support to her white employers. In order to embody these stereotyped characters, she had to force-feed herself to stay overweight. Also, she grew up in Pasadena, California, and had to learn the slow southern accent she usually adopted in movies. And on top of that, she hated doing any kind of kitchen work, especially making pancakes, which are her character's trademark in this film. Although she still plays a maid and cook in Imitation of Life, the movie gave Louise Beavers the rare chance to have a true co-starring role and play a character with a complex personal life. The cast also includes Warren William, Ned Sparks, Rochelle Hudson, and Freddie Washington. And I'll say more about her when we come back. From 1934, directed by John M. Stahl, here is Imitation of Life. In many ways, the most complicated and interesting character in this film is Piola, and it's the role that actress Freddie Washington is best remembered for today. Washington became famous during the Harlem Renaissance as a popular performer in nightclubs and on stage. She gives a moving performance as Piola, a young woman who challenges the logic of racial categories and discrimination. The color line impacted Freddie Washington's career as well. During a period when dark-skinned actresses like Louise Beavers, who played her mother in Imitation of Life, could find regular if restricting roles as servants, Hollywood deemed Freddie Washington too white-looking to play black roles. In her small turn in 1933's The Emperor Jones with Paul Robeson, she's darkened with makeup to prevent the appearance that he's romantically involved with a white woman. Though she's best known for playing a tragic mulatto, trying to pass for white but doomed by her black heritage, Freddie Washington was fiercely proud to be black. She dedicated much of her life to fighting racial prejudice in Hollywood and in the theater. In 1937, she co-founded the Negro Actors Guild of America, advocating for a wider range of roles for black actors. And she went on to serve as the entertainment editor for The People's Voice, a New York Weekly newspaper published by her brother-in-law, Adam Clayton Powell, Jr. Up next, I picked another film from the early 1930s, featuring some of the same players we just saw, including Warren William. It's a landmark Depression-era musical choreographed by Busby Berkeley, starring Joan Blondell, Aline McMahon, Ruby Keeler, and Dick Powell. 